Shanti. Peace to you, peace to me. Hello, my name is Peter and today I want to talk about conspiracies to enlightenment. Conspiracies to enlightenment. Can actually going into researching the spiritual, uh, the conspiracies of this world bring you to spiritual enlightenment? Well, it did with me. And I'm going to tell you my story now. I was, uh, many, many years ago, I, I had a friend who was a homosexual. And he really took it on board what they were doing with the HIV and AIDS epidemic. And he researched into it and he worked out that AZT, which was the prescribed drug for AZT, was a failed chemotherapy drug and it was 700 billion dollars a year at that time globally that they were making on the AIDS, HIV epidemic that we were suffering from. And AZT actually kills you, it, it does, it gives you the symptoms of AIDS, anti-immune deficiency syndrome, and it kills you, which is why I feel people like Freddie Mercury and Kenny Everett died because they were pumped full of this stuff to try and make their lives a, a little bit longer. So I found out about that from a friend many, many, many years ago. And in conversation, I used to bring it up and people just glazed and look at you like, uh, uh. I said, this is really bad. And then recently I've, I've looked into it even further and you can see how there's been conspiracy after conspiracy over that. So that really put me in the position of questioning everything. I question everything after that because I've always felt that there was something really, really wrong with this world, a bit like the matrix, like a little maggot in your brain going, whoa, you've got to find out, you've got to find out what's, what's going on with the secrets of this world. And I met a psychic, and we we're having dinner in the house, and she said to me, you will find what you're looking for, you will find secrets of this world, but also, also you'll start to uncover what you can understand with the secrets of, of life and the universe. And boy, has that been coming in quite quite strongly now, which is amazing. So I got a, uh, I got my car clamped. My car was clamped, and no, actually, first what happened was uh, I was watching the television, and Nigel Farage came on the television, and he was talking about the European Union. I thought, well, who's this idiot? We're in a, a union with with Europe, and they're. they're they, they own our sovereignty and I said hey, well, that's rubbish what are they are talking about I'd studied politics at school and common law and all that kind of stuff and then I looked into it I started looking into it and going my goodness me this is true this is we, we've been duped into a union which uh, a constitution that had nothing to do with me I didn't say anything about that you know, I, I was under the understanding that we were under common law no so that made me look into that start to research into the european union and i found so many really bad things and then one of them was there was a uh there was a, a an anaerobic digester going to be put into a little village in surrey and this was going to spur out lots of pollution around the world it's beautiful around the the area and there was a mep who was she was on the waste director of board of making the directors for waste in, in Europe but she was also on the board of the company CETA where she was going to make money out of getting them getting this anaerobic director placed digester placed in this this area in Surrey so that was a conflict of interest and I went straight into that I went at it like a, a, a bull to a red rag and I realized you don't do that now you actually do it a bit more subtly and I didn't take snapshots of the website but it was all written down there on the website I wrote into my MP MEP and after about two days everything about her and, and her links to CETA and also on the uh, committee on the European Union it was all taken down and changed and I went what? <laughs> you can't do that and they did and they just ignored me and I went to one of the meetings and I stood up and said this whole information a lot of other people had researched it. People started to rally around and start to rouse up. And then as soon as the councillor stands up, they all sit down and, 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 and not say anything. I thought, there's something really, 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 really wrong with this. So after that, I started to research deeper and deeper. And it was what 
blew my mind was, was going into 9-11. This might be a bit much for many people, but going into 9-11 and the questions that I had about that and realizing it wasn't what we were told it was. You got buildings collapsing, never, buildings don't collapse out of, from fire. No building in our history has, has collapsed through fire. They say building seven collapsed through fire. And you get architects and engineers now who are lobbying the government trying to get a new investigation. Planes cannot pl cannot fly the way that the planes, especially the ones that we went into the Pentagon, they can't do that. You've got pilots now for 9-11 Truth because they can't do that. You've got the Twin Towers dropping, going, turning into dust, free fall speed. Metal, I, I, I did physics at O-level. I know it's not high grade, but I did physics at O-level. Metal doesn't, I've never known metal ever turn into dust. Heat, nanothermite, it would melt it, surely. Dust, goodness knows, what was that? What was that? Big questions. So I, I, I joined the artists and actors for 9-11 Truth because I was so, wow, this is, is big lies about this. And those 18 people who, was, who said they, they actually committed the crime, about five or six of them were still living and working in Saudi Arabia and they were fighting in the FBI up apparently and saying hang on a minute why I'm why I'm on that on that list I'm still alive here absolutely incredible the, 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 and, and my head top of my head blew off then at that point it blew off it went geez how bad can it get and it gets worse and worse and worse I got a clamp on my car and I said what are you doing to my car this is my property and I realized my car isn't my property, it's, I'm just a registered keeper of that car and they could do whatever they want with it. There was an instance of a guy who left his window open and they said they deemed it to be a fire hazard, the, 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 the police, and they took it away and they crushed it. <laughs> and he wouldn't take the clamp off so I had to pay him the money and I said this is extortion. He said Where, where's the... Where's the where, where, where's my compliance in this? Where, where do I say that this is okay? Where is that? And he, he took me over to a little sign. He said, there's your consent. That's, that's the little sign. It was behind a bush. You could just about see it and not really read it because it's too small, the, 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 the wordings. But that was my consent to him putting that on my car, that clamp. And so I walked into the, the court and I asked the court, what law do we live under? Do we, do we, I worked out the European Union. Is it corpus juris, which is European law? Is it habeas corpus, which is UK law, which is I personally think is one of the best? Um, you, you're innocent until proven guilty. Or is this unified commercial code, which is actually what we're moving into? Or is this corporate law, which is much the same thing as the unified co commercial code, which is what those um, gold tassels around flags is all about once you got to see one of them you say oh there you go you're into corporate law now so corporate law they can do anything they want with you because you're just a straw man your name you're, 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 you've got uh, capital letters as your name and that's you your straw man it's not you the flesh and blood because they couldn't do this under natural law actually do this to you because they would be breaking natural law <laughs> but they can do it under their corporate law because the corporation has the same rights as a human being because a corporation is under corporate law and because a human being or their straw man or is under corporate law. All of this blew my head off and I became so, so angry. So angry. So how did I dissipate that angry anger? I started to train under body and brain under Qigong and under the yoga form that they, they teach, which is a Korean form of yoga and Qigong. Well, it's really Qigong, it's all based on Qigong. And goodness me, when I tried to meditate and when I tried to release all of this, it took me years and years and years of work tapping the liver to get rid of my anger, tapping the stomach to get rid of my anxiety and stress, tapping my kidneys because of the fear that they built up inside of me because they were the all controlling people. No, they're not. I realized that I know they're not actually there's a lot higher things going on than what this is so this is all an amazing journey that you can go through when you realize this that you can actually move towards a higher place a higher existence a higher vibration and really that was my long 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 experience of going through 
a dark night of the soul where I was so angry I nearly lost everybody and everything so angry and now I can see I'm just helping other people to start to see it I'm helping other people to practice Qigong I'm helping other people to meditate you're gonna have more meditations on this channel and things are getting better anger is dissipating things are moving in the right direction so I want that for everybody really but really I want people to see how bad this is and when you see how bad it is you can see where you need to go to make it better and we can <laughs> thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next video sarang hamida